Hello, my name is Mary. I'm an Avon sales representative. And for those of you who have been watching my videos and for those of you who follow my channel, you know that I make a lot of content about Avon, but sometimes I like to make content about other subjects. And today I'm going to show you guys how to make one of my favorite holiday treats. It's called Pfeffenissa. This is a small German spice cookie. And um, it really tastes a lot like gingerbread, except it doesn't have any ginger in it. Um, the way that it's usually made, I think it's, um, it has like candied fruits, like uh, dried candied fruits, like candied lemon peel, orange peel, that kind of thing. But mine doesn't, mine actually has, is made with bourbon. And you can use whatever kind of liquor that you like. I just happen to have um, Baker's Mark bourbon on hand. And that's what I decided to use. And this is what the cookie looks like. And it's really good. So I'm just about to show you guys how to make this. Okay, in this video, I'm going to show you how to make those German cookies known as Pfeffer Nissa. And this has a few ingredients and I'm only using one hand, so I'm going to do my best to try to show you everything as well as I can while using one hand to record what I'm doing. So please do bear with me. Okay, so I already have my half stick of butter that's been sitting out for a little while so that it can get soft and I have one egg and I have my quarter cup of sugar I have the spices that I'm going to use um, baking soda molasses I have my flour measured out already this is two cups of flour and you want to make sure that you always you know level your flour off you know because that's going to give you the most accurate measurement at least that's my opinion you know Okay, and I also have uh, my whiskey poured into a shot glass or bourbon. I'm using Maker's Mark, which is just what I have on hand. I mean, I've used this before to make like fruit cake that called for bourbon. So, you know, it's not that expensive and it, it, it tastes fine to me. So you can use whatever you want to use. Okay. I'm going to start by mixing the butter and the sugar together and I'm going to do that with a hand mixer and let me see what else am I supposed to add to that um, and the six tablespoons of molasses which is going to be a little bit hard to measure out so I'm going to go ahead and do that when I come back I'm going to mix all those together I'm going to measure out my molasses using two hands so I'm just going to go ahead and add it to the bowl and then I'm going to mix those ingredients together and then we're going to add the dry ingredients. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is to combine all of the wet ingredients as well as the butter and the sugar and I'm going to mix those together. So I have one egg here which I've already cracked open. Okay, so I'm adding that. And I have my one tablespoon of whiskey. Yes, I measured that out. That's one tablespoon. I have that in the shot glass. And I'm gonna add that. Okay. And I've already put the molasses in because it was easier to do it with two hands. Um, so I already did that. Okay. And I'm going to mix this up. Okay, with my hand mixer. beaten the butter the sugar and the other wet ingredients together mix them up thoroughly and I'm going to add the dry ingredients together that's going to make it easier and then I'm just going to add the dry mixture to the wet mixture so what I need is okay I need um, a half teaspoon of baking soda bacon baking soda now usually I like to use both hands so that I can make sure I'm getting this pretty accurate, but that's that's okay. Half teaspoon baking soda. And I need um since I'm holding the the half teaspoon already in my hand, I'm just gonna use that first. All the dry ingredients that are half teaspoon. Okay. 
So this is the cinnamon. I, think I might have a little bit too much on my spoon. You want to add the cinnamon next. Okay. And what else do I need? I need a quarter teaspoon of salt and one eighth teaspoon of cloves and nutmeg. So let's just go ahead and do the cloves and the nutmeg. This is, um, I'm sorry, not a quarter, excuse me, an eighth teaspoon of cloves and nutmegs. I'm sorry, apologize. Sometimes, sometimes mistakes happen, but you don't want to make mistakes, you know, with your baking because it's not going to come out good. So we have an eighth teaspoon of um, nutmeg and cloves. Okay, and to measure the salt, I'm going to need both hands. So when I come back, I'm going to add that. Okay, I have my salt ready here, and this is the last of the dry ingredients. Okay, I'm back. Okay, so before I add the dry ingredients to the mixture, I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of mix these together with a whisk so that they are thoroughly blended, and then I'm gonna add this to the um, wet mixture that I have here, the wet ingredients, I mean. Okay, I think that's probably good enough. Okay, now this is um, the wet ingredients. I know that there's some lumps. I try to get those out, but sometimes that happens. So I'm not going to worry about that. Once you mix all this together, you're never going to you're never going to know the difference. Okay, and you know one thing that I found is um, <laughs> sometimes when you're mixing dry into wet you know the, the flour will fly everywhere so you just kind of want to start out slowly to make sure that doesn't happen Oops. and maybe increase your speed if you want to a little bit so i'm going to put the camera down for a minute while i mix this together okay wouldn't you know i forgot to actually add one thing the pepper which is really the whole reason for this this recipe that's why it's they, they are spicy pepper cookies but it, you know for those of you who have never had this kind of cookie before that may sound like ooh, but really they are so good they really remind me a lot of um, gingerbread cookies only they don't have ginger so if you like gingerbread cookies then you will probably like these cookies so I need to mix that up really well and before I do that I'm gonna scrape the sides with my spatula, which is not easy to do while I'm holding the foam. So when I come back, I'm going to um, show you guys uh, how to put these on the cookie sheet. I'm just gonna mix these all together, the ingredients, and then I, I've already have my oven that's preheating right now. You're supposed to bake these at 350 degrees Fahrenheit, but as I said in another video I made, um, everyone's oven can be different and you may need to adjust either the cooking time or the temperature. My oven tends to uh, bake things quickly, too fast, so I can't always fi uh, follow the recipe guidelines. I either have to adjust the temperature or I have to adjust the cooking time. So I usually adjust the temperature to about 10 to 15 degrees less than what the recipe calls for. So in this case, it calls for um, baking at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm actually going to bake it at 335 degrees Fahrenheit because it really does make a difference you know if your cookies don't come out right if they come out too dry or if they're burned if they're overcooked you know please don't blame me I always do um, I always do a test before I commit to a full batch I will usually um, bake like one cookie at a time just to test the temperature to make sure and the cooking time to make sure that I get it right before I waste a whole batch of cookies you know some of you might not want to do that you might not want to do that many steps it's up to you but i'm just telling you if your if your recipe if your you know your desserts or whatever it is that you're cooking or baking doesn't come out right maybe it's because uh, not because of the recipe but maybe it's something that you didn't do right or like i said maybe your cooking time or your oven temperature needs adjusting okay so when i come back i'll have all of this mixed and i'm going to uh, put the cookies on a cooking sh a cookie sheet using uh, parchment paper and uh, then we're going to bake them and see how they come out. We're going to do one cookie at a time just to make sure that I have the cooking time and the temperature correct. Okay, I am back and I have everything thoroughly mixed, The all the ingredients. You know, it usually helps to have 
oops, there goes my timer. It usually helps to have um, all of your ingredients like measured out before you start mixing everything. That way you don't forget anything like I did. And that's what I usually do, but because I am making a video and I want you guys to see what everything that I'm doing, every step, uh, I didn't measure everything out before. So um, as far as spices go, I always have lots of spices in my spice cabinet. In fact, my husband uh, makes fun of me for having so many spices and sometimes I don't get to use them all uh, before they expire. You can use, I've read before that you can use um, spices after their expiration date for a while, but you know, after a time they begin to lose their potency and I guess their flavor too. So I usually throw mine out after they expire or not after, not long after they've expired. I definitely don't keep expired spices for years and years. So I just buy whatever brand is available. You know, sometimes spices and other ingredients tend to sell out quickly around the holiday season. So, um, you know, I use everything from Kroger brand, Walmart brand to like more, you know, expensive name brands. It, it doesn't matter. I don't necessarily use organic. I just happen to find this at Walmart. So that's, that's what I could find easily on the shelf. I think the other brands might've been sold out. So I have this scoop here. Um, the recipe calls for using a, you know, a tablespoon. This is actually for one and a half tablespoons and that's just what they happen to have in the store. They didn't have anything smaller. And I really love this scoop. So I'm going to be, be doing um, one and a half tablespoons, you know, for measuring the cookies out onto the uh, cookie sheet. Okay, when I come back, I'm going to try to bake one and see how that comes out. That's what I recommend doing, but of course, you do whatever you think is best. Okay, so here is one and a half tablespoons. It's gonna go on the cookie sheet. There we go. And I'm going to bake it for, let me see here, I'm sorry. You know, I made this a few times, but it's been a couple of years since I made these. They are so tempting to have around the house that I try not to make them too often. So it says baked for 10 to 12 minutes. So we're gonna try um, 10 to 12 minutes and see how that works out. And if I need to make any adjustments, I will. Okay, here are my cookies after they have baked. And I want to warn you that, you know, if you use a one and a half tablespoon scoop like I did, you're going to get less cookies. Like I think the total amount that I got was 18. And if you use a tablespoon as a scoop, then you should have about 24 to 30 cookies. I mean, that's what the recipe says. It may vary, it just depends. So, you know, nothing's etched in stone. I'm just telling you that if you use a bigger scoop, you're going to get fewer cookies, but I like my cookies to be a little bit bigger. So I'm going to move these to a cooling rack in a few minutes after they've cooled a little bit, but I want them, them to cool down on a cooling rack because if you keep them on a pan, they're going to continue to cook and you don't want them to be overcooked because the pan is still very hot. So they will still cook on the pan. And that's why you don't wanna bake them too long too. That's why I stress that it's very important to do a test batch before you commit to a full batch. And then after they have cooled down, I'm going to dust them with confectioner sugar or powdered sugar. Okay, and here we have the final result. We have the powdered sugar, we have the cookies. I cool these on a uh, cooling rack and you just simply take the cold cookies, sorry, put the camera on the cookies so you can see what I'm doing, and just um, you know roll it around the powdered sugar however you want. You know, maybe you can dust off the excess if you want to, but this is the, the end result. And you can give these as gifts if you know somebody who likes this kind of thing, Fefanissa. I know not everyone is going to like this kind of cookie, but some people really do. I do. I wouldn't have liked this when I was a little girl, but I like it now. And as I already mentioned, this really tastes a lot like gingerbread, only without the ginger. And I can taste the bourbon in it as well. So there's some people who don't drink, or maybe they don't like the taste of bourbon or whiskey, so they may not like this particular cookie. I know some people who don't drink and they don't, they refuse to even eat anything that has that's made with like wine or whiskey or any kind of alcohol so just you know keep that in mind and i hope you really enjoy making these